for this. Okay, I believe we are recording now, so um, let's go with that. Um, cool, so hello, um, Anna. Um, how are you doing this, like today? I am good, I'm good. It's been a week and a half and we've been working from home, so it's been interesting. <laughs> um, adapting to all of that, um, all the changes that come with it and, you know, still trying to keep in touch with the teams and keep work pumping. So it's been good. It's been good. Okay, no, that's, that's really good to hear. Is this like your first time like, working at home as well? It's like, I'm pretty sure this should be, right? Yeah. yeah, like working from home for an, like, you know, an elongated time. For sure. At for sure. least, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, for sure. I, absolutely. Yeah, cool. All right. I guess we just um, just jump straight into it. Um, so I guess like the people here um, on the Zoom chat as well, but also people like listening to later, um, just let's, um, like a quick introduction of yourself. So, you know, where did you study? What did you study? Um, any cool facts about yourself? Sure thing. Sounds good. Um, so I just finished a double degree at UTS in January, actually. Um, and I did design in visual communication um with bcii uh, that's a mouthful so hear me out so that's bachelor of creative intelligence and innovation and it was just a really good package of you know degrees to have done because bcii was allowing me to channel my you know design like theoretical and practical skills in a in a transdisciplinary environment so just working with students from across different disciplines so gave a very like practical real world sort of experience right through uni yep um what were your other questions so what oh, did I just like a fun fact about yourself okay fun fact oh geez um <laughs> that fun. was a hard one i, hard I still one. haven't gotten used to that one i still get that asked at work because i'm just a month into working as well so oh boy um <laughs> well i am an artist as a side hustle um and I've been working on a painting of three months now. Um, and it's been one of my largest yet. Um, so I'm not sure how many more months it will take to complete, but that's a not so fun fun fact. <laughs> not so, I mean, it's a pretty fun fact. Um, do you like paint, pro like, do you draw professionally or is it like, like a fun time, like a side hobby? Yeah, it's it's a passion. passion? I could make that a profession. I don't think I'd enjoy it if I try. Uh -huh. Fair enough. No, I get that. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, so actually just going on to like your whole degree itself. Um, just like, how did you know that you actually wanted to do something in the UX and digital design field? Um, especially now that you are like a user experience interaction designer. Um, yeah. How did you know you wanted to go towards that field? Like when you were studying like at university or maybe even high school as well? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I hadn't heard of UX design. Oh, and do excuse all the noises in the background. I have like nieces and nephews over right now, so you might hear like, <laughs> Yeah, no worries, no worries. Um, but yeah, so I genuinely didn't know of the UX, you know, the, the space of UX until second year uni. Um, and I got to know of it, know of it quite organically um, through, you know, very like personal network. So my sister works um, across all the banks. She's sort of worked as a business analyst and um you know as product teams go they work with ux designers and you know project managers and developers and they all work in these cross-functional teams and she would tell me about you know how she'd work with these ux designers and i'm like what is that term like what do they do what you know and she's like oh you know they just create screens and interfaces and you know like how one button leads to another page and you know they, they have all of that um, you know sort of um, the information architecture of a product across and I'm like okay sounds good and you know that seemed like a very interesting space to be in um, you know knowing that so many of our products as we're designing like innumerable like apps and websites nowadays that's the space it's heading towards um, yeah. and how can I as a designer help you know use the knowledge that I have to create seamless experiences for users and it just felt like a very human thing to be doing as a designer um, and that's what UX means for me at least so it came to me very naturally and I got curious and I researched some more and you know the first challenge I had to try and understand UX design was trying to get an internship and it's almost like it was impossible like four years ago trying to do that because 
there weren't many um, like, you know, recent like first or second year um, job or part, part-time job openings for UX design. It doesn't start like that. Right. Um, it starts off as graphic design and then digital design and then eventually you transition into UX. Um, and that's how it happened for me at least. Okay, that's really cool then. Um, yeah. So for UX, so far, have, you, like, have you done any like big projects so far yet that you're really proud of or are you just like still working on that so far? Um, in at like work or oh, just, yeah, just like work or like you're just like your whole experience with UX so far. Oh yeah. Um, so in my last, okay, I'll do a quick recap of what I've done through yeah. uni um, and where I am right now. So when I got curious about UX, um, I looked at, um, what website was it? It's, it's basically one of the websites where they post jobs. Um, I looked there and somebody was hiring, um, you know, a part-time student as a digital designer um, for a startup and okay. it was an established thing, but startups sound fun. Um, it, was <laughs> fun. it was very dynamic, very fast paced. I stuck around for about 10 months um, while I was at uni. Um, and then from there, I did very first hand sort of usability studies and interviews to try and gauge a need for a product to exist um in the market so that was the start of you know the ux process for me um and i got to dabble with that quite early on in my experience and that was heaps fun and then from there um as a prerequisite for my course i had to do an internship right and i think many of us would have to do stuff like that so um there was i think one of my tutors at uni shared out another posting for a ux designer and associate ux designer at a data analytics company so got a taste of corporate as well um, for a year and a half or so and it was great um, you know working in a team where people across the product are engaging constantly together and collaborating and there I got to have first-hand experience of the latter part of the UX process which is more about you know um, ideating and prototyping um, different features of a product and how you constantly engage users and do all these studies and interviews to keep iterating and refining on things. Um, and from there, um, did an internship at Google um, in 2018. Okay. And then from there, they have great avenues to try and, you know, convert their interns into like possibly full-timers if you're in your final year of uni so that's how it went for me and across all of that I've done like projects end-to-end -end for UX design so it's been great. Nice no, that's really good then it's like full circle now that you start from your Google intern to like working full-time for Google. Yeah. It's super is. cool yeah um, so that's actually like um how or you know you've been working for like um like Google for like the past month or so like how do you feel off excluding the internship of course um how how do you feel about like the culture of google so far like just like google in general um is it like as grand as everyone thinks it is or like working at google because it's so big <laughs> i mean there are the perks that they promise um there's there's the food that they promise um and you know all the luxuries that come with you know like your spas and your massages and your in in-house gps it's all that <laughs> but like the best part for me has definitely been the people and you ask anybody else who works there and they'll probably say the same thing because they're a bunch of people who are so different but they manage to be their whole selves at work that you don't exactly feel like you're working for you know for the heck of it right. you actually want to be working to make very real and genuine impact and I think that's been the best part for me. Okay, no, that's really that's really cool then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So just like as your role, um, what do you feel like like meaningful about your role as like an experience designer? Um, it's just the mere fact that you are, you know, an a, a part of a team that can affect millions of people using a product. And as scary scary as that is, that is also empowering. Okay you know you're you're able to meaningfully impact people and their experiences with you know their day-to-day -day life really and that you can use it, it has been the intimidating 
um, aspect as I've been ramping up at work, but I'm trying to reframe that and trying to, you know, let that empower me as I grow and, and learn and try and figure out what I'm doing and how I'm going to do it. Oh, that's good then. No, that's really good to hear then. That's super mm -hmm. cool. Um, nice. Okay. Um, and also just like as like your position as like a user um, experience designer, um, yeah. what sort of like main responsibilities and jobs do you have working as that? Um, just for the people who's also in, in the core right now, like a bit interested in that field, like what's the main day-to-day -day jobs that you might have for that? Yeah, yeah, sure thing. So UX designer is one ladder. Okay, no, actually interaction designer is one ladder across a spectrum of roles and responsibilities that UXs can have. So under the umbrella of UX, you've got visual designers, you've got interaction designers, you've got UX writers, you've got UX researchers. Um, what else? We have UX engineers as well. Okay, there's um, quite a few of them, yeah. So there's heaps to do. And I was lucky enough to you know, try and find my niche or, you know, the area that I not exactly wanted to be an expert in, but an area that I wanted to sort of define for myself so I can focus my skills and channel them, you know, further into that. So as an interaction designer, my like core responsibilities is basically being across the entire journey that a user would take through a product um it could be a service as well but for my context it's a product and that basically means how a user can experience from screen to screen the information architecture the navigation um how can it be as intuitive as possible and you know as as understandable and seamless to use and experience um so the way you convey messages the way you convey interactions um how can it make absolute sense to anybody using a product? Okay, right, cool. Nice. And you did mention that um, it took you, um, you found your niche like over some time. Was it like a, like a sudden like epitome or was it like a long press of like getting to the, like the, like the mindset of like, this is where I want to be? I mean, it takes a while. And for me, it, like I am exploring interaction designer, interaction design right now, but that necessarily doesn't mean that that's what I'll be doing for, um, you know, for the rest of my right. career as a UXer, because it's also flexible. Um, so it depends what area you're curious about, where your passion lies. Um, so as a visual designer, um, I trialed that out during my, um, one of my internships and that requires like pixel perfection and you have to you know your your tendencies should be um quite um uh, like it's, it's about typography and iconography and you know color hierarchy and it's it's a lot more they're all creative but i would say a lot more hands-on and detail oriented right. um and i would enjoy that but I don't know how good I'd be at that right. because I do what I do enjoy doing is looking at the high level strategy of how an interaction would work so I enjoy you know working at like low um sort of level low level fidelities um to high level fidelities of you know creating wireframes and creating quick mocks and you know prototyping things quickly to you know be across the whole um, experience of a product and I found that by trial and error um, a lot of different UX designers you know who've spent like 20-30 years in the profession have probably probably like dabbled with a lot of those ladders and eventually realized that that one of them is for them um, right. so yeah it takes trial and error and just jump into the deep end of things a little bit and try it out if you don't like it you know what's not for you so the next time you go you can you know try and um like funnel yourself towards something else and give that a go yeah no, that sounds good then yeah um and yeah just like a ladder of like all these like different subfields and subsets of like different types of um experience designers um mm -hmm. just wondering as well like in terms of, like your experience um you mentioned this before um at UTS, um, you said it was like they didn't um, market like the UI UX like 
studies very much as well. Um, is that, do you think that's like um, just for UTS or is that common like throughout other universities from like your experience? So did you mention that UTS has like markets? And uh, uh, in terms of like, um, in terms of like the actual study, like studying for um, visual design and like right. the digital design field, because um, at least from like my, my past experience and talk with other people as well, they do mm -hmm. mention it's quite niche at UNSW as well. And I was just wondering, do you think like that's common throughout every university? Um, or is it just like a certain university that's only focusing on that kind of thing? Um, I'm not too sure, to be honest. Like, if I were to be honest, I didn't have much um, sort of theoretical, um, you know, foundational understanding of UX through uni, um, like subjects or electives. We had one UX related elective that not many people would, would enroll into. So it would never run basically okay so my degree like design and visual communication was a pretty broad degree when it comes to design like it went from everything like illustration to digital design to like print and multimedia and everything and you could choose to do um post-grad as i imagine with any other um degree if you knew what you wanted to explore more of um, you know, in, in across a year. Um, but that was completely on your autonomy um, to guide your experience. Like I was never really involved into UX related projects um, at uni, but what my degree did really amazingly well was give me that foundational, um, you know, design expertise um, that, any designer would would really require to do um oh there's questions there's a question um, <laughs> um to yeah to to become like you know skillful um ux designers your interaction designers whatever it may be but yeah i'm not sure if i'm answering your question exactly oh so. no yeah you answered the question yeah <laughs> no it's all good yeah you answered the question perfectly um and okay. i guess for like our comment section um, so as a UX designer, how do you remain upskilled um, in this fast moving technology, technological industry? Uh, that's a solid question. <laughs> I, I opened up the question and now the, the model isn't disappearing. Um, okay, so as a UX designer, how do you remain upskilled in the fast moving tech industry? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question and I am still working that out. Um, I think the best thing to do is to I know anybody else would say the same, but it's like forming that network of people who help you keep up to date with, with what's happening beyond your immediate you know, context or your immediate project that you're working on. Like how do you remain up to date with the latest patterns um, and you know, innovations? Because all of that ends up happening from you know, a bunch of people who are doing stuff. And the more wider your network grows, the more aware you are of what's happening. And remaining upskilled, for me, I'm not one who would go and enroll into a short-term course. Um, you know, I, I don't tend to do online courses, but I do like enjoy learning by myself a lot. So if I'm curious on how to do something, I'll read up blogs of how other people have done stuff I'll go and, you know, create a passion project um, to go through the entire process of doing something. Um, you know, if I want to explore how a framework works, like there's all these frameworks, amazing frameworks and design thinking um, that, you know, help teams do such amazing things. And reading up, talking to people, um, actually sitting down and doing a personal project um, and then sharing that out with people like you can write blogs and share out your process and ask for people's feedback um, yeah it's it's a lot of like active doing and and talking and engaging with like the context beyond um, what you see you know in the absolute forefront of, of what you're doing at that point in time um, but yeah like I don't know, you guys tell me as well, like, what's the best way to remain upskilled? Like, I'm only starting off as well. And it's going to be a journey for me as well to try and do this because the world is crazy fast. And like, honestly, the past few weeks, it's been tough on the world. 
But the fact that all of us have been forced to slow down, I honestly feel like people are beginning to appreciate the good that can come from slowing down and reflecting and absorbing the complexities that lie out there to just pause and let it in and then figure out how we can do things better and make good use of the constraints that we can operate in. Like, sorry, this is getting like philosophical. I'll stop here. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that was a good rant. Yeah, I think that's all I've got to say for that question. (laughs) That's a really good answer, a very detailed answer. Thank you. Um, yeah, and I guess like for everyone, because I know some people like coming into this call as well. Um, you know, if you have any questions um, to ask Anna, do give your, oh, we have more questions now. Um, yeah, just uh-huh. ask any questions you might have for Anna um, in terms of like the field or like Google itself or just about mm-hmm. her personal life. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Um, yeah. So Lucy's asking, what advice do you have for students interested in working at Google? Um, it doesn't have to be Google specifically like if you're passionate about ux open up the opportunities that lie out there because the one thing that i don't regret not doing but the one thing i would have loved to do is to work at an agency for example i know so many of my friends like post uni have been working at agencies and they're learning so much because you get to really specialize and you know dig deep into working for a single client and do things and upskill in like the learning curve there is so much quicker in in different ways um so experience everything from working at startups to agencies to corporates and and then you know if if google is one place that you want to sort of make impact at then you know, go to the events where people do come and, you know, the recruiters who come to all these, you know, university campus events and stuff, they're there to hire people. Like, honestly, they're they're genuinely there to talk to you. So never be afraid. They're the most humble people that you'll meet. Um, So go up to them, talk to them, you know, what, ask them, what can I do? When's the next sort of like round of internship applications opening up? Um, apply for summer internships they usually open around like Jan to Feb of every year Um, summer internships are amazing so always keep an eye out for that Um, so that would be my advice and oh yeah and always like get a head start on building out a portfolio as well Um, if you have like specific questions of portfolios happy to answer those as well but I'll keep moving through the questions for now um, do you have any advice for people from non-technical backgrounds that want to break into UX, UI um, experience and building a portfolio? I don't know. Is that a second question? I'll, I'll, I'll look at the first part of that first. Um, so I don't have much technical background either. Um, all I'd have to say in that is try and um speak the same language as somebody coming from a technical background you don't necessarily have to know how to code but understand what sort of constraints they are working with so when you're designing for them and with them you don't try to push for crazy cool ideas when they're not going to be possible um, to be made so if you learn to maintain a dialogue with you know people across technical and non-technical backgrounds you'll be able to do great regardless and just have respect and awareness of people working with different backgrounds um and yeah always be open-minded to understand their perspective and you know um yeah don't be afraid to explain and have a strong rationale behind you know designs that you've you've explored um and and you know, voice your opinion on things as well. Um, You don't necessarily need to have a technical background to work in a UX, UI space at all. Um, So Jason's asking, I don't have much professional experience in UX, but I would like an internship in this field. And I was wondering how can someone like me stand out amongst other applicants who may have some experience? Um, So for that, I would go back to the personal projects um, or passion projects side of things. So even if you haven't really had professional experience or projects to showcase, 
um, you know, explore product ideas that you're curious about and do it. Like sit down and do the end-to-end -end cycle, um, brainstorm ideas, like engage other students or peers who, who might be interested in doing the same and, you know, run like a design session of sorts, um, test and validate those ideas, go prototype it, create like mock-ups, um, you know, if you're using programs like Figma or um, Adobe XD or Sketch, you know, design stuff. And now you have, you know, a fully thorough project to showcase that's being done out of mere curiosity and, you know, willingness to learn. And if you, you know, showcase that in your portfolio um, in, in a very concise way of, you know, what was the pro problem that you were tackling? What process did you go through to do that? Um, you know, what sort of um, sort of engagement did you have in receiving validation um, of, of that? How did you refine the idea? What was the solution? If you go through that entire process in your portfolio, um, it's going to show to any anyone reading it that yeah, you are doing your on best to figure out you know how you can be a great UXer regardless of the sort of experience you've had um, professionally um, and Alison's asking what is the most challenging aspect of being a UX designer in your perspective um, so the most challenging aspect is the most um, sort of uh, what can I how can I frame this so as a UX designer, you're working very, very collaboratively across the product team. So you're working with engineers and you're working with product, um, sorry, project owners, uh, forgive me, project managers. There's so many terms I'm figuring out. Um, so it's, it's a, a cross-functional team of engineers, UXs, project managers. And as a UX designer, you're constantly having to understand the perspective of the product need um the user need coming from ux research and what the actual constraints and capabilities are of the engineers and what you design has to be um possible and realistic and has to be the greatest experience you can provide to the users so you're working across a lot of different spaces and having to consider a lot of different perspectives and you have to be super open to receiving feedback and understanding um, perspectives and open-minded um, to be doing that but also be able to voice your own stance and provide strong rationales for design decisions that you're making so for me that's been a challenging aspect um, for others that might be something that can do they can do very naturally um, but personally for me that's been something that I'm working on like every day um, as I'm working with a bunch of people right now what's the difference between digital design and graphic design and any advice for transitioning from graphic to UX um I I feel like digital design is a broader umbrella under which graphic design and a lot of different areas of, of you know, I was going to say digital design um, sit. And as a graphic designer, you're doing a lot of sort of marketing, um, you know, marketing based, marketing related stuff. Um, like creating collateral, um, you're, you're working on elements that fit within a greater product experience. Um, as a digital designer, I feel like you're able to be across a lot of touch points um, of the, you know, the space of a product, um, while graphic is quite a small niche within that. Um, and advice for transitioning from graphic to UX is knowing that there's you know a greater space of opportunities beyond graphic and taking all these opportunities that you can to you know 
like upskill going back to that question and you know doing all that needs to be done in order to upskill and um you know understand uh, the ux process and you know figure out the trends and the patterns and the frameworks that you can operate within um to yeah to to be a ux um um it's honestly not tough if you genuinely just get curious and um you know start engaging in the right spaces with the right tools and the right people um and it's a very rapidly growing field as well so the opportunities will always be growing um and what are ways of gaining experience and skills before getting an internship or just an advice on starting a portfolio um i feel like i i spoke a lot about passion and personal projects and um that's my go-to always um you know if they like, look at your own life maybe a good space to start is there like i was having a chat with um my boyfriend recently and he's a uh, an engineer and he rides a motorcycle and as do i and you know we were both just like talking about the challenges we're facing in in you know this space that's very like personal to our lives but we're like oh like you know imagine that an app like this exists how cool would that be and a lot of us in this age i feel like we we so easily are able to be like oh like imagine how e how much easier life would be if this existed so like when you say that go and you know experience that whole thing for yourself go and create something it doesn't need to be something amazing but you know tackle one space of that that you feel could honestly solve a very real issue that's out there um whether it's an issue that you're facing um by yourself because most often than not it's not going to be you alone in that there's going to be a bunch of people who like do so much better with if something like that existed so yeah like a lot of your projects could be done out of um real curiosities and um passions like that and yeah like look on all the um forums out there where people are sharing their work like dribble and you know how can you best showcase your work um in in a way that um you know it succinctly puts your process and the outcome of your project um you know ties it up nicely and it doesn't have to be a website you know a portfolio can literally be a deck of slides where you've run the the person viewing it through the process that you've been the problem um and the solution that you landed at it doesn't have to be anything intense don't spend time in refining um a portfolio as much as you know solidifying the story that it tells um and what do you actually do as a ux designer it's a beautiful question um what do i do so i can run you through a day in my life i guess that's the best way to go about it so as a ux um you're working very closely with a person called a project manager and this is a person who has to um really cut down the bits of um you know where a product is headed on a road map into like little like chunks of feature work or tasks that a team is going to be doing and if you're working alongside other UX designers you'll probably own a feature um and you start work on that and that can start with UX researchers so in a smaller firm um there might not be a you know a separate UX research arm but a UX I might be doing the research and the design all by themselves so you tap into the research side of things you you try and understand you know what are the actual pain points that a user is facing um how can you tackle those um and then you go and start you know sketching like for me that's that's the first step i go and sketch what a feature could look like um you get feedback from those in your team and you start creating mocks um of how a project a uh, sorry a feature can come to life um you engage with visual designers you engage with motion designers 
and you create a prototype that can be tested with users. So again, you think back with researchers, you go test something out in the market, see whether that's actually um, you know, solving the problem that you were heading out to solve in the first place. If it is, great, you, know, you, you interact and collaborate with the engineers to try and spec a design out, you help them ship it, um, and then the feature is live. If from usability testing it didn't work, you go and you know loop that entire process again. So you go back, refine the feature, you know across all the fidelities that you're working at, go and test again. It's a constantly evolving, you know, um, iterative cycle that you're doing. So yeah, and it's a lot of collaboration. It's 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 fun. Hope that answers it. Um, do you have any tips for UX UI interview, or are they quite similar to a standard interview? Um, top tip would be to practice how you would talk through your projects to somebody. So you start with, and I think I like emphasized this way too much already, but like talk through the process and tell the story of every project, the story from you even recognizing that a problem exists or you having been given a brief by somebody if it was a unique project or something and the steps you undertook um, to you know go and explore what a possible avenue um, could be in solving that problem um, so yeah being able to talk um, through your projects is, is something that you can do um, and being ready to have like hands-on design exercises so i've had experiences in interviews where they'll you know give me a brief on the spot they'll be like all right you know he's a bunch of he's a bunch of users in this space this is the problem that they have um the, these are the constraints that they're working within um you know sketch out a flow of a product that could exist like do like affinity mapping and it's just being aware of all the terminology and all the sort of things um, that you might be asked to do as part of a, you know, a UX process and practice those things like practice doing it. Um, and also practice um, sort of research skills as well. Like some interviewers might ask you to um, critique your favorite app um, through the lens of you know usability so understand the sort of frameworks that usability testers use to um, you know break down any issues or pain points um, that a product might have for users so yeah and know the company as well that you're interviewing for um, and you know the sort of trends and patterns that they're heading towards so have that you know sort of outlook towards the future of what you want to be adding to within that company as a UX designer um, and go with questions um, a lot of people a lot of interviewers at the end of an interview will ask you know if you have any questions and have actually profound questions to ask them um, that you want genuine answers for like it's as cheesy as it sounds to say that you know you're not the only one being interviewed but you're going there to interview the company it is true because you do want to be working in a space where there are the sort of people that you can work with um, to make the sort of impact in the world that you want to be making um, so have questions and the questions will come from research um, researching the company, the sort of work that they do. So yeah, um, what are your hobbies? Oh, that's a happy question. And what have you been spending time on during lockdown? Um, what are my hobbies? My hobbies are painting. Um, I enjoy that a lot. It's very, th very therapeutic for me. Um, try and steal some time every weekend to do a bit of that. Um, what are my other hobbies? I enjoy sports. Um, 
a variety of it. I'll go and play cricket one day, go and play badminton the next. Um, bunch of fun stuff. I don't want to be exercising for the heck, like for the sake of exercising. Like I have to trick myself into in, into doing it by you know going on the occasional hike. Um, and what have I been doing during lockdown? I have been working from home, um, bonding with my family because I. We, we ain't got time for that lately man life is so fast paced so i'm making the most of that opportunity and just staying safe um you know hoping for the best for everybody out there and absolutely cherishing the time i have with my family um daniel's asking if i pursue a career in ux designer and ux design but decide to change pathways do you think ux skills are transferable to many other jobs pathways? If so, what career pathways do you think would be most similar to a UX designer? I think as a UX designer, the greatest part is working in that cross-functional team where you have to be so aware of the, you know, the roles and responsibilities of almost everybody that you're working with because you're working so closely with them so constantly so you might not be consciously um applying all of the skills um that you know take into being an engineer or that are required to be a project manager but unconsciously you speak the same language as them by working closely with them so all of those skills are very very transferable you become whether you want to be or not a people person and you become a great collaborator. Um, and those are the foundational skills to, you know, be anything and anyone in a product team. Um, so hell yeah, they're all transferable, honestly. And any, any space in, you know, this day and age when we're working so closely together um, to make anything happen and come to life, every basic skill is transferable so don't you worry nice cool so that was quite a lot, a lot of questions hopefully you're not too exhausted from like just going through uh, it. that's all right i'm catching my breath <laughs> <laughs> that's cool then um so i think that should be enough time yeah i think um, that's like enough time for all the questions um i guess just for me i'm um, just like my last question um, is there any like like what's your advice for like aspiring um, UX designers or just people trying to jump into the field of UX? Like what's your, like your best advice for all of these people that want to jump into that field? Um, there's a lot of responsibility that you have as a UX designer out there. And a lot of companies are beginning to see the value in integrating UX design within, you know, the, the product process and the entirety of the life cycle and that lends us a great amount of not power but an avenue to hear the voice of the users and you know go and channel that through your designs and you know go and make impact that's gonna affect millions of experiences out there so knowing that feel empowered and feel like you can go and do what you want to do um for the world and for the betterment of you know a lot of systems that are there that operate in such complexity but you can go and simplify that for users that don't need to see that complexity um and yeah just just be genuinely passionate and let your whole self be seen and be heard wherever you go because people appreciate when you are yourself um and they can see that and they want to be themselves as well because you know at the end of the day you're you're at work for more time the most time you know even more than you're spending at home so might as well be your complete and full self there and do the best that you can to make the sort of impact you want to so yeah sounds good all right then well i can't thank you so much anna for taking your time out to share your experiences and um, answer all our questions um hopefully yeah quite a lot of questions but 
Hopefully, I'm. <laughs> just happy to happy to share it all. <laughs> Thank you so much again. Um. Uh, so yeah. Um. Yeah, I think that's, I don't know. I, I'm not sure what's the best way to end this um Zoom call. But oh, okay. <laughs> thank you so much again. Um, everyone oh, just like everyone just thank on in the call right now. <laughs> this, is, this is super great today. Um, and yeah, if you guys do have any more questions to ask Anna, um, I believe uh, we can always like you can they can email you maybe. If it, are you is that okay? Um, or just like have put together whatever questions you guys may have, and yeah, send it through my way. Um, and if there's any other events or, you know, forum where I can, you know, talk to you guys again, let me know. I'd be happy. <laughs> Sounds yeah. good then. Yeah, no worries. So, yeah, you guys, sorry. And good luck, I was saying, and stay safe out there. <laughs> you too, you too. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite rough for all of us. Well, again, yeah. thank you so much. Um, hope you guys have a great night. Um, and yeah, maybe if you guys are working at Google, you might see Anna one day walking <laughs> down the hallway. Yes reach out to me <laughs> just reach out all right cool again thank you so much all right you have a great yeah. night see you i don't know how to quit this thing <laughs> it's okay I'll stop uh